Good morning. Myself, Shrikant Ravaske, Assistant Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Vekanda College of Engineering and Technology, Puttur. Uh, today what we are going to do is, uh, today we will study the characteristic of Dashiell coupler. Now this is a Dashiell coupler. Microwave theory says that we give the input to port 1, this output from port 2 as well as some of the power is coupled to port 3. Now, port 3 it is called as the coupled port. If I connect this say in the other direction, what will happen is, so this will become port 2, this will become port 1 and this is port 4. Or uh, in other words, what I will do is, I will call this as port 3 in the forward direction, this port 3 in the backward direction or port 3B, this is port 3F. In order to do experiment with this, we need to set up a microwave pin like this. Now in this setup, this is the piston tube, this is the active microwave device generating frequency in the range of some 9.6 gigahertz. This is isolator, attenuator, detector, power supply and the CRV. Now what is the function of isolator? Isolator allows only the forward micro signal and any reflected signal from the load is absorbed by the isolator. Attenuation according to the requirement of my signal, atten I can give the attenuation. Now in order to do the experiment, so there are certain in initial procedure to be followed with the piston power supply. First, what I will do is, B voltage should be off, the repeller voltage should be 70, this is maximum, some 75% of the max, uh, maximum value. My modulation can be amplitude modulation or frequency modulation. If I keep in the frequency modulation, I have to keep frequency as well as amplitude somewhere in the mid position. Next what I do is, I switch on the fan. Now what is the function of fan? Now this piston tube works on the tube technology, the older technology. So what happens is, after some time, this gets heated up. So in order to avoid the heat, uh, in order to dissipate the heat, what I do is, I switch on the fan. Next, I switch on the supply and I make ST on. As soon as I make ST on, my current will start increasing. And I started increasing. This point zero three four will go up to certain limit. After that, it gets saturated. Yeah, almost saturated now. 0 0.012 or 12 milliamp. So next what I'll do is, I'll slightly increase my beam voltage and I'll make current as 19 milliamp. So now this is almost set now. Current is 19 milliamp. I can read my voltage. B voltage is 249. Repeller voltage is negative. It is somewhere around minus 243. Current is almost saturated now. 19 milliamp. And somewhere in the middle of the experiment, if current goes beyond 20 or beyond 19, what I could do is. I have to slightly decrease the beam voltage and I have to make it as 19 milliamp. Now this is very important. Throughout my experiment, the current should be around 19 milliamp. So next what I will do is, I will get the waveform in the CRO. Now what happens is, this microwave device will generate frequency in the range of 9.6 and my CRO it is generate, I mean can able to detect some 20 megahertz signal. So what I will do is, I will do some form of modulation. Can be amplitude modulation or frequency modulation in order to get some 1 kilohertz standard square wave. Now this square wave is a function of two things. One is the repeller voltage. Now if my repeller voltage is around minus 239, there is oscillation. Around 233, there is no oscillation. Again, around 219, there is oscillation. 11 there is no oscillation so that means my oscillation is a function of repeller voltage and at the same time it's a function of attenuator you can observe
So now, it's an attenuation to signal happening. Now my signal is almost attenuated. Uh, in the experiment, what I have to do is, so I have to adjust the color voltage. I have to adjust my attenuator. So in order to get maximum amplitude square wave. So this is almost maximum. Any experiment with microwave. My first aim is to get a square wave. So once I get a square wave, the next what I will do is I will connect it to VSWR meter. That is voltage standing wave ratio meter. Now in the meter there are four scales, two black, two red. Again in the two black, one is normal SWR, other one is the expanded SWR. In the two red, one is the normal dB, other one is the expanded dB. If my measurement is with respect to SWR, I will take the either the black. If my measurement is with respect to dB, I will take the measurement with respect to the red scale. So in this experiment, what I am doing is I am measuring power level. So I will be using the normal dB measurement. So I switch on the SWR meter. So when I switch on this, uh, again some initial procedure for this is, so since I am taking the normal measurement, so this knob has to be normal and input selector it has to be always in the 200 ohm. Gain amplitude can be somewhere in the middle. So this is according to, this knob I can change according to my requirement. After getting the signal in the CR, what I will do is I will connect it to VSWR meter and after connecting to VSWR meter, I have to get the deflection somewhere in the 20-30 range. If it goes beyond 40-50 means, whatever the amplitude I got in the CRO, so that amplitude is very less, maybe I have to tune the repeller or may I have to, or either may I have to, I have to tune attenuation, so in order to get the deflection somewhere around 20 or 30. So in this case no problem since I am getting the deflection around 20 dB. So now, now my range, it is my range knob, range dB knob, it is in 20 and the deflection it is somewhere around, this is 5, 6, 7. So that means my reference power it is 27 dB. So this is one way. Other way what I can do is, I will increase the gain. I can make it 22 also. So this is according to my reference, uh, my, my requirement. I can make it, make it as 22 or I can make it as 20 also. So what I will do is, I will make it as 22. So that means my reference power PRF it is now 22 dB. So next what I will do is without any alteration, without any change, I will remove the detector and I connect my directional coupler. Now what I am doing is whatever the reference power I have measured. the reference power I measure 22 dB and giving it to port 1 and I will be measuring what is the output from port 2, what is the output from port 3 in the forward direction.
doing is I am measuring. So this is my port one. This is my port two. So since I connected detector to port two, what I am measuring is I am measuring my insertion loss. Insertion loss. So in the VSWR meter reading, so you can see the deflection. It is somewhere around 23. So this is 20. This is almost 3. 23 dB. So that means P2. It is 23 dB. Or what I can do is my insertion loss is P reference minus P2. So this is 22 minus 23 minus 1 dB is my insertion loss. So next what I'll do is I'll interchange P2 and P3. of diaxial coupler so next what i'll do is i'll connect my diaxial coupler in the reverse direction and i'll measure what is the directivity of a diaxial coupler Done here it is. I reverse the diaxial coupler. Now same port three F becomes port three in the backward direction. So that is why I am giving it as port three B. So in the real stuff they are made beta reading. So you can see that now uh, my reference power it was somewhere around twenty two dB. Now after connecting diaxial coupler in the reverse direction, the deflection it has gone beyond ten. So that means it is twenty plus ten. 30 more than 30 now more than 40 more than 50 so now i am getting almost in 5 this is 50 or this is somewhere around 58 or 59 or i can take it as 60 also so that means p3b it is 
60 dB or my directivity is P3F minus P3B. So P3F it is 27, P3B it is minus 60. So almost 33 dB. Minus 33 dB is the directivity of Dachshund coupler. Now strictly speaking, what microwave theory says that the directivity of Dachshund coupler is infinite. So infinite in the sense, when I give the micro signal to port 1, a part is coming out of port 2, a part is coupled to port 3 in the forward action and there is no signal coming at port 3 or port 4 to port 3 back or it is also called as port 4. Now since I am getting minus 33B, so this value represents although I am getting a signal, that signal is highly attenuated. So 3dB it is almost half power. So 33dB you can imagine. So absolutely there is no signal coming out or if I am getting the signal so that is highly attenuated. In the same way what I can do is I can calculate the isolation also. So isolation of directional coupler is P1 minus P3B. So P1 it is 22 dB, P3B it is 60 dB, so this is almost minus 38 dB. So isolation, now strictly speaking again, isolation should be very high value. So since I am getting around minus 38, so this is a very high value. So what I can conclude from this experiment is, insertion loss is minus 1 dB, coupling it is minus 5 dB, directivity it is minus 33 dB, isolation is minus 38 dB.